All right, today I'm going to have to make the class early. I have to go to a funeral. My wife's sister passed away. So instead of three o'clock, <clears throat> I'm going to make it now the class, and it's going to be a shorter class also. Um, <clears throat> okay, this week's Torah portion is Bashalach. Paro sent the, the Jewish people, he evicted the Jewish people from Egypt. When Paro evicted the Jewish people, now the word Vayehi usually means something sad. Vayehi b'yemeyach hashverosh usually means a bad thing happened. <clears throat> what was the bad thing? We'll talk about it. There's an explanation of the uh, Orachayim. When Paro sent the people, v'lo nacham elohim derech eres polishtim, he didn't let them go <clears throat> by the way of the eres polishtim. And I'll show you what that is in a moment. Ki karovu, because it was too close. Ki amar elohim, because God said, maybe the people regret when they see a war and they'll come back to Egypt. Let's see if we can get this picture over here and I'll try to show you. Here. Oh. Here's a picture of Egypt. Eh. All right. I guess I don't rule over this thing here. Here's a picture of Egypt. Here's, here is Israel here. When the Jews left Egypt, the easiest thing for them to do to get to Israel was just to go straight like this. To go straight. Let's see if we can get another picture. Here's a better picture. Here's Egypt. Here's Israel. Right? So they could have just gone straight. Oh, here, maybe perhaps this is the best. Here, see? <clears throat> to go straight this way. But the problem is, is this is the land of Israel. <clears throat> here is Eretz Palestin. Eretz Palestin is, I guess, where now the, 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 the Palestinians that made their country or actually we gave them the country. In any case, that's over there. So the Palestinians, the Palestinians, they were a fierce people, and the Jews were totally unlearned in war. They didn't know how to fight. So they were afraid that if it was, even this was a close way to go, but it would also be a close way to return. So therefore, God took them all the way over here. Now, where exactly is the Yam Suf? That they call it the Red Sea or the Sea of Reeds. I mean, Yam really is sort of like the Sea of Reeds. Where it is exactly, there's a lot of different opinions about where it was, but generally it's it's accepted that the Jews went into this Yam Suf and they came out on the same side they went in and they went into this, they, they just went down the river and then they came out the same side. However, it was, <clears throat> see what we can get, let's go back here. All right, so by Beshalach Paro, when Paro sent the people, he sent the Jews. Rashi. He didn't allow the people to go. Kikarovu was too close. It was close to go back to Egypt. And the Midrash, there's a lot of Midrash Agada, there's a lot, says Rashi. As soon as they saw a war, if they would see a war, <clears throat> like for instance, they had the war with the Amalekis, the Kananis. If they would have gone straight, they would have been able to return quickly. Here we see that after all, God, in order to evade this problem of them returning easily, so He took them in this crooked way. Well, if when even God took them in a crooked way, not the Rosh when the Shuv Mitzrayim, the Jews said, "Let's go back to Egypt." If He would have taken them in a simple way. How much more so they would have gone back? <clears throat> That's what they, they would come, the thought would come. They would think about it, ruminate about it, and they would all go back <clears throat> to Egypt. They return back to Egypt. The Bala Torah, very interesting, he says, That's the Gematria, Erev Rav. There were all these. Uh, improper converts that came with them, and they became, they were, later on they'll be called the Safsuf, and they made all sorts of problems. We were introduced to them last week. <clears throat> or Chaim asked a question, he says, why does it say that Paro sent them? Paro sent them, say God that sent them. And also, why does it say Vayihi? Why is it sad? So I'll tell you in a short way. <clears throat> he says the fact is, is that really, if God would have sent them out against Paro's wishes. So then Paro wouldn't have had the 
courage to run after them because he already saw that it wasn't in his hands, that the whole thing was in God's hands and that he was just a pawn in God's hands. But now that Paro himself sent the Jews out, so he felt himself to be a bit of, of a boss. And he said, listen, the Jews left. If the Jews left, they left of their own volition because I, I let them go. I allowed them to go. So therefore, he ran after them. And that's why it says, Vayahi, Allah troubles, problems, because Paro was the one to sin. He also gives another explanation. And he says, because this whole entire story about the Jews leaving Egypt and the Paro sending them out, is that eventually what it meant is the power would run after them and he would and his, his people would be decimated, his whole army. And it says that God is Yakpid al Kilion and Ibrahim. God doesn't like <clears throat> to destroy his creations. Like we learn a lot of the places, a lot of places. And also there's a midrash that says that when the Egyptians were uh, drowned in the sea and afterwards the Jews sang a song of redemption. So he said, My handiwork, God said, My handiwork. My people that I created are drowning in the sea, and you're singing songs? But there's a lot of explanations on that also. And that's why it is, why, what, so if so, what was it that caused all this pain? Because Paro sent the people. If God would have done it, then Paro wouldn't have ra- run after them, and he would have saved all these, these lives. Here's a Kliyakar right in the end. Let's see what we can get. Oh. <clears throat> He asks a question, it says, this is really a question on the next sentence. So we'll go to the next sentence and we'll see. It says, So God detoured the people through the desert. The desert was called Yam Suf. And the Jewish people were armed. They left Egypt. Oh, the Or Chaim is going to ask, the the Kliyakar. Rabbi Shlomo Milunchitz, he's going to ask a question. What do you mean the Jewish people really had weapons? Where did they get weapons from? And why would they take weapons? They had no idea how to use weapons. These people were all slaves, servants. So he says, according to him, this is what his interpretation is. It says that the Chamushim means that the five books of Moses they took with them. In other words, they, they knew they were going out to receive the five books of Moses on Mount Sinai. And that was the power that they had. That was the power that they had. He brings interesting also say also the number seven, because some people say that there's seven books of Moses, that the book of Deuteronomy is divided into three books. Anyway, it's very interesting how he said. <clears throat> okay, so Rashi though says simply, they went out Hamushim. Rashi says that God detoured the people in a long way, and he took them <clears throat> through the Yam Suf. And they were Hamushim. What does Hamushim mean? He said that they were they had weapons, that the Jewish people went out with Mizuyanim. It says that they went out armed. And that's what our uncle says. Uncle says, just one moment. Here's another explanation that Rashi brings. Um, the, is it <clears throat> another explanation? Chamushim. What does it mean they went out? Chamushim. They went out one fifth, five. One fifth of the Jewish people left Egypt, and four fifths died in the three days of darkness. So that the Egyptians wouldn't see these were four fifths of the Jewish people, they didn't want to leave Egypt. They wanted to stay in Egypt. <clears throat> and they didn't want to be part of the whole redemption and receive the Torah and et cetera. So therefore they died in the desert. And in, 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 in Egypt, they remained back. Vayikach <clears throat> Moshe, Moses took the bones of Yosef with him. Israel, Yosef made the Jewish people promise saying, that God will visit you, and he will take my bones from you with, with no, no, uh, uh, <clears throat> sorry, Yosef died uh, well before um, Moses was born. And in any case, he certainly died well before the Jewish people left 
Egypt, he died something like, I don't know, 120, 130 years at least before the Jews left Egypt. So Moses was not there when he received this oath. So <clears throat> the or the or the Sophrono says, because Moses was the leader of the generation, and therefore he, <coughs> he had an obligation. The obligation of the generation of all the Jewish people is on the leader. So therefore Moses, because he was the representative of all the Jewish people, so he had to take them out. <coughs> Ask the question, obvious question, Ari, when Yaakov died, so Yosef took Yaakov's bones out of Egypt immediately. He didn't let him be buried in, in Egypt. He took them out immediately and they made a big march, a big procession to the, the land of uh, Israel to bury him in, where he's buried now. Yaakov is buried in Mar Machpelah. Why didn't Yosef also say the same thing? Is that why didn't Yosef make them swear, the Jewish people, that they would take him out right now to the land of Canaan and bury him? Over there, true, Yosef is not buried in Marat HaMachpelah, he's not buried in Hebron, he's buried in Shechem, but nevertheless he could still be taken up to there. I mean, it was it was the possession of the Jews, the, Yaakov bought it. Why didn't he do what Yaakov, Omer Yosef said, now I am the ruler <coughs> in Egypt, and I have the ability to do, but my children, I don't know if the Egyptians are going to allow them to do it, so I can't make them take an oath that they can't fulfill. So therefore, he, he said that eventually when Moses comes and he whoever comes and takes the Jews out of Egypt, then they'll have the ability and they can do it. <clears throat> who did he make, who did he swear? He swore it to his brothers, to his uh, brothers. The, the, and so we know that also the, the brothers of all of the tribes, in other words, all of them, they all died in Egypt, right? All, not just Yosef died in Egypt, the only one, and, and was buried in Egypt also. Of course, they all died, but they were all buried in Egypt. The only one that was taken out of Egypt uh, immediately when he died and was not buried there at all was Yaakov. But except for that, all says all of the tribes died. Also, they all died, and their bones were also taken out with them. Like it says, now eat him with you, right? Eat him with the, all the rest of the tribes that were there. By Yisam and Sukkos, they went to Is the, the Sukkos, they parked at a place called Eitan, Eitan at the end of the desert. And God went before them in the daytime with a cloud to show them the way. And in the nighttime, he showed, took them a, he led them with a pillar of fire to show them the way to walk day and night. <clears throat> so in other words, the Jewish people couldn't go anywhere that God didn't lead them. So God led them through by this pillar of fire. <clears throat> and this is also protective. In addition to this, they also had um, clouds that surrounded them and protected them. And soon after the man, mana started to fall and the Jewish people began to eat the man and the water came from the rock of Miriam. We're going to have to stop now because I have to go to this uh, funeral. So Hashem should raise the dead up and we shouldn't have any more difficulties and, and sadness in the world. Have a good day with Mashiach. Now I'm sorry, we can't go any further. Tomorrow, God willing, 8.15, we'll learn um, uh, the, the Hasidut and the Bar Malchut, and we'll continue here with where we left off.